left tackle. Gets taken down by Dave Du Dufresne from Bishop Fian. That's not Dufresne, that's Diversion A. Dave Diversion. Diverns, that Diverns. Diverns, okay. Now. Again, a two on the play, second and eight. Paps calling the signals. Coil in the wishbone. The pitch comes to right tackle. And he could be gone. It's Anthony Maffini, number 30. He gets taken down by Deverns at the 30-yard line of Bishop Fian. A big gain for Maffini. Coyle Cassidy coming out strong. A wet field. He got around the end, and Bishop Fian was beat, Bill. That was a 39-yard gain for Maffini. Just cut around the outside. Uh, the defenders on the outside got down. It was driven out of bounds. The ball's at the 29-yard line of the Shamrocks. Coyle Cassidy's ball, first and 10. Touchdown saving tackle by Deverns. First two plays, Deverns has both tackles for Bishop Fian. Paps calling signals. Gives the ball handoff up the middle. And it stopped. It's Mark Doherty. And no gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10. Actually, they do give him a yard. Se uh, second down and nine for Coyle Cassidy at the Bishop Fian 28, 27 yard line. Doherty is the uh, leading scorer for the Coyle Cassidy Warriors this season. He has seven touchdowns. He was injured the first couple of games earlier on with a back injury, came in uh, unsuspectedly uh, for the Somerset game and led the Warriors to a victory over the Blue Raiders. He has picked up the play for Coyle Cassidy. A quote in the paper from Bishop Fian coach. We'll get back to that in a minute. Off left tackle is Furtado for Coyle Cassidy. He picked up a couple. It'll be third and a long six for Coyle Cassidy. I'd have to say it's two down territory there. In uh, Bishop Fian, deep into Bishop Fian territory. I can't see them punting and I can't see a long field goal here. The Warriors will grind it out on off. You won't see much passing from Paps today, especially with the wet uh, field conditions, the rain. They're just gonna grind that clock out on the, on the ground. The option on the left side. Paps keeps it, now he pitches it to the left side, that's for Tato, and he's got a first down taken out of bounds at about the 15 yard line. So Bishop Fian is, has, ha, hasn't touched the ball offensively, and that's uh, Coach McGonagall's strategy, keep the, keep the ball away from Nate Cody and the Bishop Fian offense. On that play, Paps held the ball onto the very last second before he was almost brought down and pitched it out to uh, for title for another six, seven yards on that plate. So it's first and 10 for the Warriors on the 16 yard line of the Shamrocks. Let's make that the 17 yard line. First and 10, the handoff goes up the middle to number 30, I believe, it's Maffini. Maffini again. And Coyle Cassidy looking very impressive on this opening drive. He picked up about five yards on that play. It'll be second and five from the 11 yard line. Drive started back on the Warriors' own 30-yard line. Of course, the big play in here in this drive so far has been the 39-yard run by Maffini. Taken off close to three minutes. Just about seven minutes to go in the first quarter of play. Paps calling his signals, the wishbone again. Paps is gonna keep it off, left tackle, and he gets dragged down at the one-yard line. First and goal at the one for Coyle Cassidy. And a big, nice strong run by Paps on that play. That was an 11-yard run, Derek, and as you said, he's down close inside the two, probably the yard and a half line is where they spot it. So it'll be first and goal for the Warriors at about the two, or closer to the one. It's hard to see from, uh, there's great press box. I love this <laughs> press box up here, but let's call it the one-yard line. So a wet and muddy field, Coyle Cassidy. First and goal at the one. The handoff goes right up the gut. Mark Doherty for a one yard touchdown plunge. Six to nothing, Coyle Cassidy just like that. Coach Gilmartin can't like that opening drive for Coyle Cassidy. A 70 yard drive, Derek. As we mentioned, that big run by Maffini getting him down into Shamrock territory. But uh, all on the ground, and that's what you're gonna see with the Warriors today. Bishop Fian. It's going to have to regroup here, and we'll see what they can do offensively with Nate Cody, the arm of Nate Cody and his receivers. So it does look like Coyle Cassidy is going to kick a field goal. That's number five, Greg Napier. The hold of Mike Sheeran. And it's right up the middle. Plenty good. 
enough. <laughs> so with the score, Coyle Cassidy seven, Bishop Fee and nothing. 6.32 left to go in the first quarter. We'll take our first break. Please have the police officer to please watch the West Gate. But it was early. We'll get better. I got the officials too here. Oh, good. Um, after we go into every break, we, we try to not, I mean, we can talk, but just in right, case they just, miss a commercial. Right, okay, right. I got it. Just about ready. How you doing? Good to see you. Hi, Kevin. Yes. Here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome back to Haywood Field in Attleboro, Massachusetts. Coyle Cassidy, Bishop Fian, Thanksgiving Day football. If you just joined us, Coyle Cassidy just marched right down the field on their opening drive, and the score is seven to nothing. Six thirty-two left to go in the first quarter, and Coyle Cassidy just kicked the ball out of bounds. That'll be a penalty. I'm not sure. I believe they either get the option of kicking it again right. or taking the ball at the thirty-five yard line. That's yeah, the ball went out at the, I think it's the 25-yard line with the referee standing with the flag, so let's see what they want. I think they're going to go uh, with the, decline the penalty and take the ball where it is as Coach Gilmartin sends out his offense. Coach Gilmartin very nervous about the opening quarter earlier in the week. He was quoted as saying, the first quarter will tell a great deal about how the football game will go. We'll, found, we'll find out early, Sills Gilmartin. And on that opening drive, he found out the offensive strengths of the Coyle Cassidy Warriors. Ground exactly. attack, run out the clock. Exactly, exactly. Of course, Fiend's uh, attack is all by the air. Nate Cody coming into this ball game with 1,339 yards in the air, 12 touchdowns, has completed 93 of 197 attempts. And we'll see what happens here. Coyle Cassidy, the pass defense, very suspect. They have not been tested in 1992. Cody, first and 10. Hand off up the middle goes to DeVerns and he picks up about four yards. Was taken down on the play by the quarterback, Chris Paps. Actually picked up about three. It'll be second and second and seven. I think that play was just uh, to throw the Warriors off a little bit. Expecting the throw, expecting the throw, and then going off with a with a run on that play, picking up three yards. Six minutes and running in the first quarter. Derek Barber and Bill Breen from Haywood Field in Attleboro. A wet Thanksgiving morning. <laughs> Mike, you're off in motion. The pitch comes to Chang off right tackle, right end. He splits it outside and it'll be taken down by Pabst and Mark Doherty, the uh, offensive backfield playing defensive backfield for Coyle Cassidy. A loss of one on the play. It'll be third and eight for Bishop Fian. We still haven't seen that pa that first pass yet. I'd have to On take a good down chance we're going to take it long, right Yes, here. I would guess so, too. Still a little sprinkle coming down. Not bad. The field's still wet from the downpour we had earlier. Not too bad of a crowd either, despite the weather. No, not bad, bad at all. Cody does drop back to pass. Pats is in there on the blitz. And the ball goes right through the hands of number five, Tommy Warren. I think he tried to run before he actually caught the ball. A decent pass by Cody, who is getting chased by Coyle Cassidy defenders. And it'll be fourth down, and Bishop Fian will have to be forced to punt. DeVerns will be doing the punting duties for Bishop Fian. On that play, Warren uh, was uh, wide open there, and, and I think you're right. I think he realized he was open and tried to catch the ball before it was thrown and, and, and had a, at least a first down on that play as Coyle Cassidy was in on Cody. Fake and punt it's a here. fake punt. The pass comes in number 16, Corey Almeida down the right sideline. He has the first down and is taken out of bounds at the 50-yard line by, I believe, number 58, Mike O'Brien. Very well executed play there by the Shamrocks, catching Quill Cassidy it, off guard. Didn't expect that at all. It if, actually looked to me like it wasn't a fake, but they, they pulled it off as as Coyle Cassidy defenders were, were rushing in to block the punt. DeVerns looked, had a wide open Corey Almeida right down the right sideline and a big play for the Bishop Fear and Shamrocks, first and 10 at their own, at the 50 yard line. That could be the spark they need to get back in the ball game, trailing seven nothing. Absolutely. Cody, handoff up the middle. 
to Warren, and he'll pick up uh, about four or five yards. And we apologize to the cable viewers. We really haven't been paying attention well, to the we, monitor. Well, we have been, but uh, <laughs> uh, we're doing this game simulcasting, I guess, on Absolutely. radio and WARA and WPEP. Maybe they'll and be able to edit that out. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Second five down yards and six. Play. Quick pass by Cody. Out to the right side, left side to Paul Klin. And Cody threw a bad pass over the head of Klin. He was wide open for a little screen play. I think he rushed it. The two minute drill. Yep. Fian without a huddle. As Cody looks over to Gil Martin to get the play for this at third down and about six to go. 440, 433 left in the first period. Buffalo Bill style offense here by Bishop Fian. Cody drops, drops back to pass. Plenty of time. Gets the ball out in the flat to Matt Fleming, and he streaks down the left sideline, steps out of bounds at about the 27 yard line. And defensively. That was Derek Dufresne knocking him out of bounds at number 21. You notice in that play, Derek, unlike the previous pass, pass play, that, that Kigoti had tons and tons of time. The, the offensive line did a wonderful job giving him plenty of time to find his receiver and picking up the first down. The ball is on the 27-yard line of Coyle Cassidy. It is first and 10. Cody, two-minute offense. Fake up the middle. He's going to roll out to the left side. He's going to tuck it up and run. Gets the ball to the 20-yard line. Takes a big hit by number five, Greg Napier, and number 25, Jack Taylor for Coyle Cassidy. I'm not sure whether that was a sprint out or a type of a a sprint out pass, but he did tuck the ball up, and they're still going with the two minute drill with 4.03 left to go on the first half. Second and three, I'm sorry, Bill. Just trying to catch the Warriors off guard after a couple. It was a bad snap on that play. I think uh, maybe one too many no huddle offenses here and results in an illegal procedure penalty against the Shamrocks. I'm not sure how slippery the ball is, but Cody has thrown a couple of ducks out there and maybe the, the center had trouble handling that ball. But again, running without an offense here as Cody looks in to get the, the play from Gil Martin. After a couple of uh, getting burnt in a couple plays, the uh, pass, uh, the fake punt and a couple of pass plays and running plays, Bishop Fian is trying to catch Coyle Cassidy. A little confused out there, so they're just running without a huddle. On second and about uh, eight to go here. Quick drop back, Cody. Bad, another bad pass. Tried to get the ball to Clint across the middle. Clint slipped because Cody threw the ball behind him. And that'll stop the clock and it'll be third down and nine. Seven to nothing, first quarter. I noticed that a couple of times. Cody going back, slipping as he tries to plant the throw. And there you saw Clint going down, slipping before the ball was thrown. So obviously the field conditions here, and you see the, the mud on that side of the field where Fian is now, going to play some havoc with the Fian passing game. Cody rolling out to the right, couple pump fakes. Throws the ball and it's tipped and That ball could have been picked off by Matt Perkins for Coyle Cassidy. But Jake, Greg Jake, Napier. Jay Cornelia too, number two, is out there knocking the ball down as we know that playing. Kind of got, a hand, got his hand on the ball. It looked like Perkins was, was off to the races and one of the other Coyle Cassidy defenders, I believe it was Napier, tipped the ball and uh, Perkins was a little upset. Fourth down and eight. We got a field goal try here, I believe. No, no, I guess not. I thought no. that was Fiatroni. Okay, fourth and about eight from the 20, 25 yard line of Coyle Cassidy. A drop back by Cody. The screen play will come to the right side to Fleming. Fleming still on his feet and will get pushed out of bounds at the 19 yard line. Not enough for a first down. So it will be change of possession. First down, Coyle Cassidy. Seven to nothing. First quarter action from Haywood Field. Derek Barber and Bill Breen will be right back. And Coyle Cassidy fumbles the ball. I believe they're going to call his knee down, Bill. Mark Darty bulldozed his way up for 15 yards. And as he was going down, the ball slipped out. And there was going to be an awful close call out there. Tom Warren gets it in the backfield. But the referee, Thatcher Carl, said no. The ball was down at the 35-yard line. First and 10 for the Warriors on that 15-yard gain by Darty. Coach Gilmartin giving the official an earful after that one. He was very actually close. Very on. Very close call. Very close call. He was actually on the field. That would have been a big play for Fian. They fumble in the very next play. First down, Bishop Fian. A big turnover for Coyle Cassidy early in this first quarter. Number 70, Steve Zaneski coming up with a loose ball in that play as Maffini, who, was, who had the ball, never gutted it. Slipped out of his hand straight in the air and went right down at the 35-yard line. And Coyle Cassidy 
has its first turnover of the ball game, first turnover for both teams in the ball game. And Bishop Fian's going to have to take advantage of these turnovers. They're getting the ball in their own territory here. Looking for six. I think Cody looked a little bit excited in that first quarter. Or, well, actually, in that first drive. You got to relax a little bit. Take his time. He's slipping because he's he's just looks so excited out there. We'll see what happens. He drops back now. The handoff up the middle comes to Warren. Warren gets taken down by number 21 Dufresne's Derek Dufresne's for Coyle Cassidy, but not before Dufresne. Uh, Warren picks up about six yards. Warren so comes in the ball game for the Shamrocks, the leading uh, uh, ground gainer with 335 yards, a 6.6 average. Every time he touches the ball, has four touchdowns. Gain of six on that play. It's second down, second down, and about four, about four yards. Oh, another bad pass by Cody. A fake handoff up the middle. He took about a three-step drop, tried to fire the ball over, to, over the middle to Fleming, who had done about a 10-yard and turn around. And the ball was thrown about six or seven yards over his head. Cody seems to be having trouble with his it's grip. It's tough to say there's a key play with two minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. But I think here with third and four, Cody seems to be off a little bit in the early going throwing. If Coyle Cassidy can hold here and fourth down, they're not in Fiatroni's field goal range yet, I don't believe. Especially with this wet field. That's Dufresne's taking the ball over right tackle. I believe it's a first down for Bishop Fian. Deverns gets up there. Yeah, it's going to be close. It is a first down to the 25-yard line. So that is a big play there. Gets some four more uh, downs. Getting deeper in Coyle Cassidy territory. Clock is running with two minutes, two seconds to go. Coyle Cassidy on top here, 7-0 from Hayward Field in Attleboro. We have a Dufresne and a Deverns. Deverns. Getting a little bit confused here. I apologize. French, French ancestry names. The handoff goes to Chang now. Breaks it outside, right side, and Chang could be gone. Touchdown, Bishop Fian. Touchdown run there of 25 yards for Tony Chang. His second touchdown of the season. Great bit of running there by Chang. It looked like Mark Doherty was going to tackle him at about the 15-yard line, and, and Chang kind of slipped away. Once you get to that open field, just turn on the afterburners yeah. there, Derek, and Got just came outside. in there. Touchdown. Fiatroni going for uh, the with one point conversion here. Trying to tie the game up at 7 6 right now with a minute and 41 to go in the first quarter. Best kicker in the Eastern Athletic Conference, Dana Fiatroni. Puts his leg on this one right up the middle, and it's good. So with a minute and 41 left to go in the first quarter, we have a 7 7 tie. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back, everyone, from Haywood Field. This is Derek Barber. Joining me is Bill Breen. Bill, a pretty exciting first half, first quarter. First so far, yeah, 7-7. Seven, seven. Credit that touchdown to Steve Zaneski getting that loose ball and setting up that touchdown, the 25-yard by to yard run by Tony Chang. Derek Dufresne here has the ball, and he's going to be smothered. Big tackle. Number 88 there, Pat Thayer. For Bishop Fian, and that might be a uh, if they give away the stars on the helmet. Actually, you're most supposedly supposed to be in the inside the 20-yard line on a tackle special teams, and they're at the 22-yard line. Maybe if the coach, Gil Martin's nice enough, he'll give him one. Tear. Let's run through the officials for today's game. We didn't get a chance to do that as action has been coming fast and furious here. The referee this morning is Thatcher Carl, the umpire Dave Sinelli. The linesman is Warren Jones. The field judge is Jim Thrasher. And our electronic clock operator this morning is Norman Parks. Coyle Cassidy now. That's Doherty taking the ball over right guard. He grinds out a good five or six yards. He's strong, Bill. He definitely. Took about three or four Bishop Fian tacklers there to take him down. Coming in the ball game with 342 yards on the ground and seven touchdowns and scored one earlier in this quarter. So now has 48 points on the season. Second down and five to go. It says four on the screen, but no, we're close. Closer to five. Ball is on the 28-yard line. We're under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Paps calling the signals. The wishbone behind him. He's got a split out to the right. He pitches the ball to the left side, and that's number 30, John Maffini, and he had nowhere to go. 
Tony picks up a yard, if that much, gets up to the 29-yard line. Keith Hopkins on the tackle for Bishop Fian. I think they tried a little sweep there and a great job by the right side for Bishop Fian. They wouldn't let him go anywhere. They closed the, the outside off and he had to cut it up and Hopkins was waiting for him. So third down and three or four yards to go. Coyle Cassidy. Paps takes the snap. Dishes it outside to... Well defended again by the Dorian. Shamrocks. Great defensive play. The outside of the Bishop Fian defense is doing a great job shutting down the sweeps. They strung that one out and forced Doherty to the outside, and they were th there was three against one, and he had nowhere to go, and gets back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and four. We've got 11 seconds as the clock stops as Doherty goes out of bounds, but it'll be a fourth and four, I believe, a punting situation for the Warriors as number five, Greg Napier, comes into the ball game. DeVerns will be back deep for Bishop Fian. He's done it all today, tackling. The big uh, pass on the fake punt in the first quarter. And he'll be running this one back for Bishop Fian. Good kick. He caught a good piece of it. Takes a bad bounce for Coyle Cassidy. And Changes a good his roll. mind. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be touched down at the 45 yard line of Bishop Fian's. And that'll be the end of the first quarter with the score. Bishop Fian seven, Coyle Cassidy seven. We'll be right back. If your house is brand new or you... Haywood Field, Derek Barber, Bill Breen. Second quarter action, Bishop Fee and Coyle Cassidy. Cody hands the ball off to the right side to the... Verns, and he's brought down by Coyle Cassidy's number 90, Ryan Powers. You know, Derek, I think the key in that first quarter of play, Coyle Cassidy has a man down, number 76. I believe that's Joe Mulhern. Let me just check my roster here. But getting back to uh, what I was saying, I think Coyle Cassidy expected Cody and the Shamrocks to go to the air. They've kept most of the ball on the ground, and I think they've, they're going to have to change defenses. They're expecting the pass. Number 76 is Joe Mulhern. As you see, he's being taken off the, helped off the field by a couple of his teammates and uh, looks to be a little shaken up. Maybe it looks like he's, he's favoring his right leg, so uh, hopefully that injury won't be too serious. But... With the uh, stats that Cody has put up as far as passing is concerned, I think the Warriors, uh, as I mentioned, a little bit uh, suspect in the past secondary. L looking, uh, looking to hold uh, Fian closed down in the, uh, in the aerial attack, but Fian has kept the ball on the ground with Warren and, and basically Warren and Chang doing most of the... And it comes looks like a reverse here. It's a fake reverse. Chang takes the pitch, fake the handoff to Fleming, and he's off to the races around the left side. He's brought down by a couple of Coyle Cassidy defenders, and, and Coach Gilmartin's pulling out all the tricks today. I was just, gonna, I was just thinking that. He's, he's throwing everything, and again, they want him to run the no-huddle offense, get Coyle Cassidy off guard. We got to watch. The they the might be setting up that reverse right there with a fake. Usually, you you set up the fake reverse with the reverse. He's going the opposite route. Ball's on Coyle Cassidy's 36-yard line, where it is first and ten for the Shamrocks. Cody drops back to pass. Three steps over the middle. He threw it high again. Cody having a lot of trouble throwing this af this afternoon. I, I don't understand, Bill. I, I really want to get my hands on the ball. I want to tell how wet that ball actually is. He, he really, this is not a, a Nate Cody type day so far. Again, it's not raining as hard as it was about 10 o'clock, about a half hour before the game started. But nonetheless, it is very wet. It is drizzling out there. Very damp field is in, is in good condition, as can be expected, with the rain that we've had this week, not only today, but earlier on in the week. And uh, Cody having trouble overthrowing or throwing too high to get his receivers. Second and 10 from the 36. Cody goes back again. A great block by Warren. Cody's going to tuck it up and rolls around and picks up about three yards. Doherty there for Coyle Cassidy. Very smart move there by Cody. Could have very easily gone out of bounds to avoid being hit, but Spun came back into the field of play to pick up an extra two yards. Good move there by Cody. So it will be third down and a long seven for Bishop Fian, and once again, I will apologize to both listeners, cable and radio. This is our we're, first Yeah, game. we're trying to juggle. <laughs> we're trying to keep the cable viewers and the radio listeners all satisfied. We're doing this game on TCI cable in North Attleboro and Taunton and Inland Bay in Attleboro and the radio stations in Attleboro and Taunton. So 
quick dish out to Fleming, I believe. That's Matt Fleming. And he'll be brought down. About five about yards short, I believe. It depends where they spot it. About the 30-yard line. Actually, the 28. They gave him a good spot. 28, so it'll be about fourth and three, I believe. And again, a key play. Coyle Cassidy needs to hold here. Fian trying to keep the momentum going. Uh, they were down 7 nothing. scored a touchdown, and are trying to move into deeper into Warrior territory. 8-0-8 remaining in the first half. 7-7 the score between Coyle Cassidy and Bishop Fian, the 30th game between these two schools. Cody now with a big fourth down. The fake handoff to Warren, and Coyle Cassidy perhaps is in there without getting hit. And he's going to pick up the first down. It could have been an illegal block. First down, Bishop Fian, no flags down. And Chris Paps had He had did. He had him and threw field. himself at him. And I don't know if that's exactly the tackle, but I think Paps had no choice as the fleet-footed Cody swung around and still looking for a receiver. We didn't see anybody open and saw some open room. It's an awful wet field out there. Better for the runners than it is for the defensive. He's down at the 15-yard line. 7.47 to go. Bishop Fian and Coyle Cassidy deadlocked 7-7. Seven seven. Cody with two wide outs to the left. Handoff goes up the middle to Chang. Chang hops over and Coyle Cassidy defender and brings the ball down to about the 8-yard line of Coyle Cassidy. will be second and approximately three. And if we're driving you crazy early here, we promise we will get better. Right, Bill? <laughs> we're working at it. <laughs> We're working at it. Well, what the heck? We're having fun anyway. We hope you are too. About this time, you're getting ready to be eating your turkey. I, ca I can't help bring this up, but North Attleboro's ahead early over Attleboro. We hear that. It's a big upset. That game's already over, but <laughs> we Se don't know that. Second and two from the eight yard line. Deverns takes the kind of flip pass from Cody, gets out of bounds at about the six yard line. That, that could have been a forward pass. Doesn't matter because he could pass it, but Deverne's doing it all so far for Bishop Fian. He's going to come out and Chang will go back in. Gain of about a yard on that play, breaking, bringing up third down and then one. Let's see where they put the ball. The ball's at the seven yard line of Coyle Cassidy. And the momentum seems to have turned to the Shamrock's favor here, looking to go ahead for the first time in the ball game. A big fumble early in the first quarter after they marched down the field and then they had to turn it over on downs for a punt. And Bishop Fian now has it. Warren off right tackle. And he's got the first down, I believe. Peter Gay would know better. Peter Gay has called himself the expert first down marker. Oh, that's easy. That, was, that one's an easy one. That was an easy one. That pickup of uh, three yards in that play. It's first and goal for the Shamrocks. The, three the ball is on line. the three-yard line. Fiatoroni loosening up his leg down here, expecting the extra point, I hope. Cody's got Deverns and Warren in the backfield. The handoff goes up the middle to Warren. He runs into his own guy, but still picks up a couple of yards. He ran right into Matt Sanville, I believe, number 75. A good, good hit by Sanville, although it was his own player. Gain of about a yard. He Get the ball up to the two now. That's where it's spotted. 6.20 remaining. Clock's running here in the first half. Pretty decent crowd here. We've got not all the way around the field, but we've got fans standing, as you can see, those cable viewers behind the fan Chang zone. takes it now. Gets the ball Close. down to the inch line. Close. He's waiting Held for a back. Call. No call at the goal line. So it'll be third and inches for the touchdown. Chang doing some great running here. Although he's going to come out, and Deverns is going to check in. Both coaches, Bill, have stressed how big this game is for the future of both Exactly. Programs. Both Gil Martin and, and McGonagall have done excellent jobs in their respective first years at both schools. Deverns and Warren in the eye. The handoff is to Deverns and a big hit. Coyle Cassidy, five or six defenders there. Great job, and that'll be a loss of about three on the play. Big play. Let's see what happens here. Fiatoroni coming on the field to try a field goal. One of the leading scorers in the Eastern Athletic Conference. He's got the boot. He's going to try to put the Shamrocks on top here. 
I can't really tell the numbers. Was that Aaron Lachance for Coyle Cassidy? It, it was, and a host of other Warriors. The ball, they're going to put the ball at the 10-yard line, making a 20-yard kick. Holding is number seven, Brett Poirier. Don't they know better, Coyle Cassidy, to keep their, yeah, jerseys, time out. Keep their jerseys clean right. so we can see them? A little bit of a mix-up down there. Poirier and Fiatteroni were coming over looking to Gil Martin. I don't know. Maybe they're shorter, man. How many guys got out there? I'm not sure. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think we're a shorter guy. Maybe that was the reason they. I think they were trying to relay that off and tell uh, Gil Martin Martin's. they needed another man on the field. So we have a timeout with four minutes, 47 seconds remaining in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven the score from Haywood Field in Attleboro. Anderson. For a field goal attempt by Dana Fiatteroni, he drills it right through the upright. And Bishop Fian takes their first lead of the game, 10-7. to seven. It's almost automatic when you get Dana Fiatteroni inside the 25-yard line. He has just proven himself to be one of the uh, premier kickers, not only in the conference, but in the eastern Massachusetts area. And 20-yard field goal there by Dana Fiatteroni puts Fian up 10-7. to seven. A little less than the five minutes remaining in the first half of play. There's a couple of kickers in the NFL that could use Dana. Yeah, yeah. you got it. You got it. As we mentioned before, this is the 30th game between the two schools, and going back to 1963, Fian leads in the series 16 to 13. There have been no ties. Coyle Cassidy won last year's game 12 to nothing. And at the end of the contest, the LG Balfour Trophy will be given out to the a uh, person in this game whose, whose uh, performance best exemplifies the qualities of sportsmanship, leadership, and athletic skills. And, of course, Bishop Fian and Coyle Cassidy would like to thank the LG Balfour Trophy for providing that wonderful honor. I know uh, both players look forward to seeing who's going to receive the trophy, and uh, that will be made at, at the end of the ball game here at Haywood Field in Attleboro. And the rain seems to be picking up just a little bit more, I think. Not too bad. I don't it's think it's, it's a raw day. It's you know, not uncomfortable, but... Mild and raw in the same words usually don't, in the same sentence, usually don't mix, but that's the kind of day it is. The ball would be picked up by number 90, Ryan Powers for Coyle Cassidy, and he's still on his feet. He's still on his feet. He's breaking around the right side and will be taken down from behind by a couple of Bishop Fian. Not bad for a big old linebacker. Not bad huh? at all. Nate Nascimento on the tackle for Bishop Fian. 